Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to yet another Chess Engine tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to focus in on castling. Uh, but before we do that, I did make one modification to the en passant method. If you remember before we took the history and of the last move and we checked if it was a pawn push, a double pawn push I should say, and if it was then en passant was enabled on that file that the en passant, that the double push uh, happened on. But I uh, switched that so that instead of having this string there we're constantly updating, what I did was I added a, a en passant uh, bitboard and this will represent if it's zero that means no en passants can happen but if it's a number it'll that number will represent a specific file. And then when we call our move, I added this EP, which stands for en passant in there. And then our uh, possible uh, moves for a pawn, this is uh, from White's perspective. Um, I check, I just do an AND EP, and that will either allow or disallow specific en passant. So that was just, just seemed like a little more elegant uh, solution to the same problem. And the other thing I've added now that we will discuss is the castling. So the first thing we needed to do was have a few variables which uh, set the uh, castling, uh, whether it was allowed for each option. So we have four Boolean values. We have uh, the castle for the white king, the castle for the white queen, castle for the black king and the black queen. Uh, when they are true, this means, I should write this here as well, this means that castling is possible. So when, for instance, a castle on the black side happens, we will have to set both of these values to false. Or if, let's say, uh, the queen side rook moved for white, we would have to set the castle white queen side to false. So that's uh, simple enough, but we also have to obviously send all of these variables to our possible moves so that it knows whether castling is enabled, any of the four castling options. So when we go to this castling here, we have two methods, possible castle white and possible castle black, which are fit both uh, pretty much the same and they're really, really simple code. Uh, we obviously start off with this string that we will be sending uh, if castling is allowed. And what we do is we just check uh, if it's true, castle white king, and we take this other thing. Now what this code will do to the right that I'm selecting here is it makes sure that the rook has not yet moved. So if that rook has moved, then let's say the kingside rook on white had moved, then it should not be allowed to castle. Um, obviously, if our engine de never made a mistake and once that rook was moved, it disabled castling, this check would not have to be uh, made, but I add it there just as a safety precaution for the time being. Um, now, here's basically how I do it. I have this method called castle rooks, and I've defined it up here as uh, four, just an array of four items, uh, 63, 56, 7, and 0. And if you look on a bit board, 63 is the very bottom right bit in the bit board, which is right where the white kingside rook is. 56 is the location of the white queenside rook. And the same goes for the black side. So what we are doing here is we are taking that number, in this case the white king uh, move, and we are shifting it over, so this is 63, uh, shifted over to grab that rook bit, and we're saying if at that bit and white rooks, if there's a white rook at that starting location, then uh, if that's not true, then we can add this list. So that's just a line that we have here. We can eventually get rid of it after we finish debugging this thing. Um, and then obviously we have to add 
these castling options to the possible uh, moves list. So I've added possible castle white for the white moves and possible castle black for the black moves. And that wraps that up. In the next tutorial, we are going to be figuring out how to debug all of this so that our engine has a 99% chance of never making a mistake. And we will be doing that using a perfed routine, which you'll learn about in the next tutorial. Until next time, enjoy Java.